He's incredible as a director. He um, he gives us direction as we're doing it, so he'll kind of narrate over so we can react to them, which actually really helps because in real life, you're whenever you react, you're reacting to what's happening. So when he's talking to you, it's like it's actually happening, and it really helps. He has the most incredible visions and yeah he comes up with new ideas we come up with new ideas and it's just it's really coming together he is amazing when it comes to envisioning everything he's a child genius and his family are rich but they're a good family they're just you support them instantly from when you first meet them because they're just a lovely family and and um, then Artemis's dad goes missing and this completely throws Artemis and he, know, and he knows that he has to get his dad back and he will go to whatever lengths or he will do whatever it takes to get his dad back. Holly um, is an elf in the fairy world and she is a police officer and she's always had quite a tough time because her um, dad did something horrible so she's always been compared to her dad and um, she feels like she's never she's underestimated because she loves action she just wants to do what's right and um, like no matter what the cost as well but um, she feels like she's being undermined because she's stuck doing a like clock in, clock out job rather than getting in on the action. He'd read the books before this was um, ever talked about, um, so he knows the character well. So he's he knows the character well. So he knows what the character is supposed to be like, which I think is always important because. We, have, we do have to remember these were books first. And um, even though the movie may be different, it is based around the books because that's where the idea came from. So he always wants to stay true to how Artemis is and how he um, becomes. So that's really important because he understands Artemis's way of thinking and his, um, like, yeah, how Artemis behaves. And um, then at the same time, the, he just he just instantly becomes character the minute the camera turns on. He can just, he um, will look into the character, he instantly can, because I think Ferdia and Artemis are really different, um, obviously because Ferdia is really nice and sometimes Artemis can be a bit annoying. Um, and Ferdia can just really click into playing that character, that kind of like villain, but you still root for him. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's really good at it. <laughs> Root is played by Judy Dench, and um, I first met her um, a couple weeks before filming began, which was a really incredible experience. When I first met her, I was so overwhelmed and excited because this is Dame Judy Dench, and I've never done anything big like this before, and I get to work with her. So um, I went to shake her hand, and she gave me a hug, which, like, I did tear up a little bit. I did, I, I did tear up. I, I was just. And she's so lovely and she's so down to earth and she's really normal and she's so lovely. So getting to work with someone as experienced and as lovely as her is really an honor because um, never doing anything big before and then jumping to working with Judy Dench is insane and amazing and it's just, it's the stuff of dreams. I met Owen Colfer very, quite briefly because I was needed, but I did get to meet him, which was insane. And I say it's very strange for him to have spent, like, because there's eight books. That's, that's like, oh, your whole, that's a big thing for him. That's his kind of like baby in a way. And um, he wrote the books and he came up with everything to see, so to, walk into Foul Manor and see everything that you spent so long writing about just be there, a physical thing in front of you. Must be very strange, but very rewarding at the same time, I hope. 
Um, but yeah, I'd say, and it was so amazing to meet him and get to talk about everything down to like the costume, to the ears, to Holly, and just be able to, and think that he created this and I'm helping, I'm getting to recreate this in the form of something that's physical that people will be able to go and see and have as like a DVD and be able to watch anytime they want. Hey guys, here are our top five upcoming movies for 2020. On April 10th, Daniel Craig's final Bond film, No Time To Die, will hit the big screen. On May 1st, we'll see Scarlett Johansson lead her own Black Widow movie. The last Fast and the Furious movie, F9, will be with us on May 22nd. On June 5th, no one should miss Gal Gadot's return to her role as Wonder Woman in Wonder Woman 1984. And finally, on November 20th, the world will be faced with Godzilla vs Kong. Click here below to subscribe.